Hey, Stephanie, your closet's looking a little bit empty. Maybe you should fill it with a little bit of Bionic Pig merch. That's right, baby. This merch is made by fans for fans. I held a contest on my Twitch and you guys made the sickest designs and I picked my favorite ones and put it on the website. And the winner of that t-shirt contest, bam, won $100. And all shirts are only $17. $17? <laughs> That's impossible. Ugh. Shut your mouth, you son of a bitch. Go to the bacon shop and get yourself some freaking Bionic Pig merch, you ingrate. Does anyone remember Paris Hilton? You know that one girl, she was famous, you know, for that thing. That, uh, you know, being famous. Well, not sure if you guys are aware, but she had a pretty amazing acting career. Starring in films such as Pledge This, House of Wax, and a family favorite, Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike vs. Paris Hilton, Best Friend's Ass. Huh. Oh. But a classic. But today we're going to be talking about a film that I don't think many people know of, or at least I was kind of blissfully unaware until someone ended up spitting it directly into my mouth. Because that's what it felt like. The Haughty and the Naughty. A movie that could be summed up in one noise. This is one of those movies that attempt to make some sort of progressive message. It's a basic cliche message, you know, care about someone's personality over their looks. And boy, they miss the mark by a mile with this movie. So the movie starts out in first grade where we meet the main character, Nate Cooper, and he is narrating his childhood, talking about meeting the girl of your dreams. And the thing that I will keep coming back to, and you probably will as well, is the fact that this is first grade, ladies and gentlemen. In first grade, you don't think about how hot a girl is, or if you love a girl, you think poopy, stinky, funny boogers and girls have cooties. I don't really know who uh, Heidi Ferrer is, but I don't think they know how humans work. So anyway, Christabel, who is going to be played by Paris Hilton, is the new girl in school and Nate instantly falls in love with her in the first grade. How beautiful. So he makes a Valentine's Day gift for Christabel. Then we cut to 20 years later. Nate is in a terrible relationship and he's singing a song to his current girlfriend to try to mend the wounds. You want the guitar? <laughs> and she hated the song so much that she ran him over with a car. <laughs> I mean, just a normal reaction to a bad song, honestly. So this is where the first grade thing gets weirder and weirder. So apparently he only knew Christabel from first grade. And he saved a picture of the first grade version of Christabel. He's 26. That's like if I had a picture of a girl I knew in first grade. That's not okay. That's not normal. It's quite a car you've got out there. Thanks. Why don't you have a seat? So after Nate was dumped, he randomly realized that he wanted to meet Christabel again even though he's 26. He could have just met her when he was a teenager or hell, even younger, but no, had to wait till he was 26. I mean, you guys know the saying high school sweetheart. Well, you're about to see the first grade sweetheart. What is wrong with this movie? So he goes to his friend's house. Oh, he's also from the first grade. Honestly, instead of high school reunions, could we just start doing first grade reunions? I feel like that's more memorable, you know? So anyway, his friend from first grade is a deadbeat who is a professional stalker. That's Christabel? Yep. You know, cause you, usually 13's a bad age. From the first grade on, she just got hotter every year. <laughs> oh! Oh, the writer might be a pedophile. Oh God. Why don't you have a seat right over there? So then we learn about June Fig, who is the naughty. And apparently in this universe, the hotness of one girl is directly proportional to the ugliness of her best friend. It's a very well-known law of physics. The hotness of one girl is directly proportional to the ugliness of her best friend. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. It doesn't at all. <laughs> God damn it. So throughout the movie, they make June out to be the most grotesque creature on the planet. It's just blood and pus and toenails and hair and just every gross thing you could think of, they just threw on her. It's almost like they just added zombie makeup. Oh, and on top of that, everybody aggressively makes fun of this girl throughout the movie. It's really hard to watch a lot of times. She's like some hideous dragon guarding the princess from escape, you know? Okay, so now we have the whole premise of the movie. In order for Nate to get Christabel's heart, he has to please the ugly girl June. Just a regular thing us guys do, you know, us fellas. <laughs> guys don't do this, okay? I, I really hope we don't. So anyway, his creepy ass friend pulls out a filing cabinet. May I repeat, a filing cabinet full of files about Christabel. We're just gonna look the other way on that one, aren't we, huh? Just gonna ignore that he's a stalker. All right, cool, whatever. So Nate ends up 
running in to Christabel, you know, because his friend knows exactly where she is at all times. But Nate runs up to her and he um starts smelling her. Mmm, damn girl, you drizzle some G Fuel on your nape? Cause that shit smells like you use code PIG to get 30% off your order of some delicious blue ice G Fuel. Here, let me get a little bit closer to that 30% off deal using code PIG. Oh shit! Is this how they think normal men act around women? This is just pure disturbing. This is weird. Guys don't act like this. Or, I mean... Normal guys don't act like this. So Nate tackles Christabel and the normal response to that is, hey, let's go on a date. Hey, you want to watch me do yoga? Hell yeah. So fellas, next time you want to hit on your first grade crush, just run up to her, smell her G Fuel filled nape, tackle her. You get to go see her do yoga. Boom, bam. Ah, young love. So beautiful. Then he discovers that her roommate is actually June from first grade. Oh yeah, and somehow they made her even more repulsive. Like, I know they wanted to make her look ugly, but they just went straight for the gross out factor. There's nothing normal about any of this. So anyway, Nate gets bumped on his back and ends up making out with June. Whoops-a-daisy. Oh, and apparently Christabel's into that shit. Nice. June and I don't get much action, so we take what we can get. <laughs> That's weird. So after a couple obvious ass shots of Paris Hilton, you know, because Paris Hilton, Nate gets a face full of sock and he just... Oh, he just sucks in the scent. Feet. Mmm. Feet. Oh, fuck. Oh, God, I'm, so I'm sorry. So after the yoga session, Nate ends up asking Christabel out on a date. But the problem is... Christabel will not bang anyone until June also bangs someone. Wow, that is <clears throat> admirable. But that could be a very, very long time. Normal. So Nate gets the awesome idea to pay someone to do it because he's just a stand-up guy. So he goes up to Christabel, tries to play up the nice guy, saying, like, I can't believe people can't look past June's looks and just realize he's a good person and has a good personality. Now, I want you all to remember this, how awful of a person Nate is. Because Nate is appalled by June's looks, and the only reason he's dealing with it is so he can get with Paris Hilton. He thinks she's gross. Just keep that in mind while we move forward. Then we meet the guy who is going to be going by the name Cole Slauson because it's a fake name that Nate ended up giving Christabel to get her to shut up. So they go on their double date together and obviously Cole is pure disgusted. Like he just is about to puke, basically. Oh my God. He has whiskers. And no teeth. Nice to meet you. It speaks. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they are fucking mean to June in this movie. Even the captain they hired to pilot the ship decides to leave because he thinks that she is ugly. And I'm not feeling too well. Looks like you have to find yourself another skipper. So again, basically this entire scene, hell, this entire movie is just, hey, Christabel Paris Hilton is hot. Ooh, ooh, sexy. Oh, damn. Awooga! Awooga! June is gross. Ew, poopy, stinky, winky, gross. Ew, blah. <laughs> That's the whole movie. So Cole drinks a little bit of Jim Dandies, and then brace yourselves. This part's actually very disgusting. It made me a little bit nauseous. Uh, so if you don't like gross things, just beware. One of June's toenails that was infected flew off her toe and just landed in Cole's mouth. Nate, good news. I just lost my toenail. Ah! Why? Th there's literally no point in doing this. It, they, they did it just to be gross. Like they did it just to gross out their audience. You're awful. You're awful. So after Cole swims away in a fit of disgust, Nate tried to give June a $2,000 spa treatment. Where the hell does he get this money? I have no idea. Basically to try to make her not ugly anymore, but she doesn't accept it. And then Christabel tells June some really good advice. You know, I heard somewhere that 95% of the way others see you is the way you see yourself. Hey, maybe if you start having some more confidence, you wouldn't be as ugly. Really, Christabel? Stupid bitch. So now their new idea is to hypnotize Cole in order to find her attractive. And obviously with the power of movie magic, 
it works. They didn't hire a hypnotist. They just tied him up to a car battery and then swung a, a, a clock, a, a watch in front of their face. Oh yeah, and the phrase to snap him out of this phase that he's in is I love midget mimes. Remember my instructions until which time you hear the phrase, I love midget mimes? Boy, golly, gee, I hope they don't run into a midget. God damn it! So Cole freaks out and runs away. Then the midget mime draws June as a horse. Why are they so goddamn mean to June in this movie? Like, I get it. You know, they're wanting to make her ugly. But holy shit. Oh. Oh, but wait a second. A big, handsome, muscly guy comes out of nowhere. Knocks the midget away and takes June, sweeps her off her feet. That was a very strange sentence to say out loud. So this is Johan, and basically he is a walking, talking, perfect man. Just the peak performance of all mankind. He went to Harvard, he's rich, gives to charity, he's a pilot. He's basically the guy, you know, who could do everything. And he is interested in June. But obviously Nate, realizing how attractive the guy is, thinks that he's actually going to June in order to get to Christabel so he don't like Johan. Conflict. So now we are at a club and Nate and June are having a little bit of an awkward flirty dialogue. So since Johan happens to be a dentist, he ends up helping out June by fixing her teeth, giving her a little bit of Rogaine for the baldness, and somehow getting her mole removed and fixing her acne. Why didn't June do any of this herself? Like, Rogaine ain't expensive. She could go to a dentist. I don't understand. It's movie logic, so it doesn't matter. But then Nate gets mad that Johan is dancing with Christabel, then tries to tackle him for taking off his shirt. But he accidentally ends up tackling Christabel again. But instead of Christabel being attracted to getting tackled this time, she gets mad at Nate. Pfft, classic Nate tackling women. So Christabel brings out her inner Paris Hilton and basically says that she is out of his league and uh, tells him to leave. It's time to get to know you, Nate. I really wish you'd done the same with me. This movie confuses me. So now we have another time skip, and this one is only of three weeks, and Nate is living at his gross friend's house. I still can't get over the first grade thing, I'm gonna be honest. But then his friend says, no, you're depressed. Go for Christabel again. I know I'm waiting three weeks to tell you, and I could have told you this like a couple days after you were sad, but I let you wallow in your own self-pity for an entire month before I decided to actually help you out. But anyway, he says he knows someone who could help him get back with Christabel. And lo and behold, that person happens to be attractive June! What? And now Nate starts to get a little bit interested in June? Oh god. So they go back to June's place, they start talking a little bit, then June happens to mention that she's never been kissed, and then Nate ends up kissing her. Wow, Nate, you're a cool cat, aren't you, Nate? So June tells him to leave, and now we're at a costume party. How? Why? You don't have to ask questions, all right? You just gotta, you just gotta accept what happens here, okay? So Paris Hilton farts and then spills wine on herself. Oops. <laughs> don't worry. It wasn't the smelly one. Then Nate ends up running into Johan. Then Johan says she's almost beautiful now and that he's trying to make June into his ideal woman in order to bang her. She's almost beautiful now. And I think tonight, it's finally time for a reward. If you know what I mean. So Nate gets mad about that and picks a fight with Johan and obviously he loses. But I don't get why Nate is angry because he is worse than Johan. I mean, sure, Johan dated June in order to fix her looks to make her more pretty, but Nate wasn't even slightly interested in June while she was ugly. He didn't even make a look at her or care about her in the slightest until she happened to be attractive. I mean, at least Johan was with her while she was ugly. Nate's actually a terrible freaking person. So finally, after all these years, Nate is finally in bed with this first grade crush. Holy shit, that sounds disgusting and terrible. But also, June is about to bang Johan. But the problem is, they both realize this isn't what they want. June wants Nate, and Nate wants June. Oh. So after a little bit of a lingerie shot of Paris Hilton, because, you know, it's a movie with Paris Hilton in it. They have to have one of those, am I right? Nate ends up telling Christabel that he does not love her and that he actually loves June. And then Christabel just doesn't give a flying fuck. Nate, I'll be fine. It's not like I have trouble getting dates. Okay, yeah. <laughs> 
So Nate runs up to June and then confesses his love to her because he gave her the Valentine in first grade, but he didn't give it to Christabel. And since he gave her the Valentines out of sympathy, he's like, that means I love you because first grade is love. First grade, first grade. So the message at the end of this movie, guys, remember, if you're ugly, just be attractive, you know? Just be pretty. What are you doing sitting there not being pretty? Just be pretty, you know what I mean? Like, like hire someone to make you pretty. Plastic surgery. Make yourself a fake person. Become Paris Hilton. Become Paris Hilton. No one will love you until you become Paris Hilton. What kind of fucked up message is that? But I think the real message they were going for is, you know, the normal thing. Like, personality is way more important than looks, which is true. Someone who is considered hot can actually look extremely ugly if their personality is ugly. A personality can change your entire perspective of beauty. But, as you can see, they missed the mark just slightly. Just slightly. <laughs> Very slightly missed that mark. So yeah, um, this movie was awful. I wish my eyes have never witnessed it. But before you all go, you know the one thing that makes you 100% better in all categories? G Fuel. If you drink G Fuel, you will become like Paris Hilton. You will become Paris Hilton if you drink G Fuel. That's not actually their brand. That's not their, their, their tagline. G Fuel. You will become Paris Hilton. That is, that's your new tagline, G Fuel. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm writing it for you guys. You will become Paris Hilton if you use code PIG to get 30% off your order. Become Paris Hilton. Devour G Fuel. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm gone. Thank you all for watching this. Please subscribe. Uh, please follow my Twitch uh, if you want to be a part of the next t-shirt contest. And you might have your designs on my website next time. And please go buy the merch and all that stuff. Goodbye, Paris Hilton.